Mr. Lechstrom. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My questions today are for the Minister of Health regarding the issue of alcohol use disorder. Mr. Speaker, recently the Yukon government expanded their chronic disease and disability benefits to cover medications used to treat alcohol use disorder. I believe alcohol use disorder affects a great many uh, Nunavut and it is not clear what kind of treatment programs, counseling options and other supports are available to address their needs. Uh, I'd like to ask, can the minister provide an overview of the kinds of treatment and services that are available uh, in Nunavut specifically for individuals with alcohol use disorder? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Minister of Health, Mr. Main. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I thank the member for the question. And for, and for raising this issue here in the House with, we know uh, we need uh, the support here and I'm pleased that it's being raised here. Um, avenues to receive help and uh, I want to encourage anyone out there that uh, if you do uh, have an issue with alcohol or with any other substance that there are avenues. So there's a number of different options, uh, Mr. Speaker. We have in-person counseling and support. Uh, we are currently training our paraprofessionals uh, within mental health uh, to give them better uh, capacity around substance use. Uh, there is remote therapy uh, that's available, uh, specifically our Healing by Talking program uh, through the department. Uh, we do have on-the-land programming in all three regions that's been uh, gaining gaining momentum, three, three and a half million dollars budgeted for that uh, in this fiscal year. And the, there is alcohol use disorder medication stocked in every health center in Nunavut. Uh, naltrexone is the name of the drug. It's uh, been added as of uh, 2022. So there's a number of different ways to get support. And the last uh, one, Mr. Speaker, is also access to out-of-territory treatment. Matno Hakichi. First supplementary, Mr. Lechstone. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I'd like to thank the Minister for that response. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, alcohol use disorder is a medical condition with uh, potentially devastating impacts on an individual's health, uh, their work, uh, their social lives, but most significantly, uh, their families. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there is, uh, uh, I've been given to understand that, uh, uh, as, sorry, Mr. Speaker, there is, um, unfortunately, there is a great uh, number of uh, regular clients at uh, our uh, Nunavut Liquor and Cannabis uh, Commission stores, as well as other uh, liquor establishments across this territory. And, uh, I appreciate uh, the Minister's uh, response in, in what is available in territory as well as out of territory. I'd like to ask if the minister would be able to further elaborate uh, and uh, would the minister provide uh, an overview of yearly average of, of how many Nunavut are diagnosed with alcohol use disorder and receive referrals, referrals for treatment and how many are sent out of territory for treatment? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Minister of Health, Mr. Main. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the uh, member for the question. Member is requesting specifically on the, the, the diagnoses. I don't have those available uh, currently, but I am willing to look into it and return to the member, not taking the question as notice, Mr. Speaker, just committing to return to the member with more numbers as I can uh, receive them. In terms of out of territory treatment, uh, we don't have it uh, broken down by uh, in terms of the, the root cause, whether it's specifically uh, alcohol use disorder, but we did have uh, in 2022-23, we had 153 clients 
uh, receive treatment uh, out of territory, and that could be for trauma or it could be for alcohol use. We have a number of different facilities, uh, Mr. Speaker, that provide this valuable service until we can develop it in territory. And uh, final note, we had a um, Inuit specific addiction treatment uh, request for proposals that uh, recently closed and we have a new facility added to our to the list uh, of service providers out of territory. That is the Mami Shapwik Healing Center. And uh, very happy to have that uh, facility coming on board soon to provide assistance. Second and final supplementary, Mr. Lightstone. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, again, I'd like to thank the Minister for that response um, and not taking the question as notice. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, most uh, ad addiction and trauma-focused approaches uh, uh, revolve around uh, abstention. Um, Mr. Speaker, there has been uh, growing support for uh, managed alcohol programs internationally as well as here in Canada. And those managed alcohol programs uh, have had a high rate of success among the Inuit clients out of territory. I'd like to ask, can the minister confirm if, uh, if the, our Department of Health uh, funds the Inuit clients in these managed alcohol programs, and if a similar program was created in Nunavut, would the department support it through a fee for free for service agreement? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Minister of Health, Mr. May. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, our department's involvement in terms of out-of-territory out of uh, managed alcohol programs, um, you know, that's something I can look into further. In terms of in-territory and if such a program was to be uh, put forward, it's, it's certainly one that we uh, would uh, consider. Uh, we have strong working relationships with uh, non-profits across uh, Nunavut, uh, whether it's Ilisaksivik uh, in Clyde River, whether it's Pulagvik in, in uh, Rankin. So we do recognize the important role that uh, non-profits and uh, different healing-related groups can play in terms of the continuum of care in Nunavut. Uh, so if, if such a group was to bring forward a, a managed alcohol program, it's, it's one that we would be willing to consider and thank the member for raising this important topic and encourage all Nunavut to uh, reach out for help. Uh, if you need it, uh, it is available.